it's um, a lesson that's very much about um, the head and the and the neck. And um, as ever, if it's dealing with that issue, it, a good idea just to remind you to take things easy, not to force anything, just to be very, very gentle with yourself. But just by way of a quick warm up, please come to the front edge of your chair and um, uh, check that if you are rolling back or notice if you are rolling back and a, re um, a way to help address that is to think of pushing the lower tummy um, forward and down to help lift up onto the middle part of the sit bones. Good. And then please just have the arms comfortably down by the side and then please bring your shoulders up to the ears and then just let them fall away from the ears. So just dragging or lifting the shoulders up towards the ears and letting them fall away from the ears, good. And then once more, just lifting them up to the ears and then down, good. And then please lift them up to the ears, this time roll them forward and down and squeeze them together behind you. So you come up towards the ears, forward and down and squeeze them together behind you and then just once more in this direction but just being careful it's very easy to try and do this through the elbows um, but if you can just through the shoulders and then reverse the direction of the circle so just nice easy breathing shoulders coming forward up to the ears together behind you and down and then one more time, up towards the ears, um, back, down and forward, and then um, release, good. And then um, please bring your attention to your um, right foot and begin to imagine there is a grape underneath the right heel. Could you squash that grape and then release? So you're pressing down into the foot to squash the grape and then release and see if you can notice and allow as you press into the foot there's this slight lifting up of the right hip to bring the weight into the left hand side and then you release. Uh, so just pressing into the right foot, allowing a little bit of side bending to happen to the left and release. And then do the same with the left foot. So you're just pressing into the left foot, allowing that little hiking up effect, your lift of the left side of the pelvis to bring the weight onto the right and then release. And once more, pressing it into the left heel allowing the weight to shift over over to the right good and then release and then just separate the feet and knees a little bit wider than you might do normally and then um, return again to thinking of pressing down into the right foot um, to lift the right side of the pelvis and then allowing the ribs of course to move a little bit more clearly over to the left and then come back and once more pressing into the right foot to allow the um, weight shift over the ribs to move over to the left and you all remember in this class that it's also important that you allow the left shoulder to um, go to the side and slightly up and the right shoulder to lower as part of that side bending. So quite often what I see when I'm uh, working um, individually with people is they'll get the rib movement but they'll keep the shoulder, the right shoulder lifted. So they're getting a little bit of side bending but the upper part of the spine is still moving as, as a stick. So once more pressing into the right foot to allow the weight to shift over to the left. You think of the ribs moving to the left but one shoulder goes up and one shoulder goes down and that enables us to keep the head more or less of course in the in the middle good and then please pause 
and then bring your attention to your left foot press down into the left foot so you're letting the left side of the pelvis lift thinking of the ribs moving over to the right and then importantly the right shoulder goes to the right and slightly up but the left shoulder goes down the, if the left shoulder goes down it means those ribs underneath the armpit are folding together as part of this movement so once more just pressing into the left foot to shift the weight over um, to the right and then come back and then see if you can alternate the two sides so first pressing into the right foot to allow the spine to side bend over to the left just checking the shoulders so that the one shoulder has gone up one shoulder has gone down and then come back and then pressing into the left foot to uh, shift the weight over to the right again just pause and check that you have allowed that le uh, left shoulder to come down as part of the movement and then come back so once more over to the left by pushing into the right foot and then over to the um, to the right shifting the weight by pushing into the left foot good and then come back and then bring your feet and knees again more or less um, hip distance apart <clears throat> and then bring your hands onto your onto the rim of your pelvis as we did um, la um, last week and the week before I think and um, think of just um, rolling your pelvis back to um, curve the spine backwards to um, uh, um, shift the weight to the back of the sit bones and then think of tipping your pelvis forward to bring the weight forward of the sit bones allowing the spine to lengthen and to arch so you just rolling the pelvis back and then rolling the pelvis forward so again just back and forwards and you remember an important thing that we thought about was in this movement keeping the shoulder over the hip so it's not leaning back it's not pitching forward it's just trying to um, observe that constraint of keeping the shoulders the outer shoulder over the outer hip so that we get um, more of the spine involved in this arching and curling movement good just a few times good and then pause and so you remember if we have a side bending a side bending action and a forward and backwards action it means we have all the elements effectively of a circle or a clock where 12 o'clock would be in front of us uh, on the um, in front of the chair six o'clock behind three o'clock over to the right so I'm mirroring for the class and nine o'clock over to the to the left and then bring your hands onto the thighs and then think of um, coming forward or bringing your weight forward to 12 o'clock so tummy is out chest is lifted slightly there's an arch in the in the spine but still keeping the shoulders over the hips and then go to six o'clock so you're just rounding the back so to, and then back to 12 o'clock and to six o'clock good just a few times here checking the breath is easy the jaw is <coughs> excuse me nice and relaxed and then um, from 12 o'clock from that forward position that arch position can you begin to go around to three o'clock so we're back in that side bending position to the left and then come back to 12 o'clock okay just from 12 o'clock round to three o'clock and when you get to three o'clock just check check that the left shoulder 
is lower than the right leg. You're not holding the shoulder up. Come forward to 12 o'clock, back onto the two sit bones. And then once more go round to 3 o'clock. And then from 3 o'clock, can you travel round to 6 o'clock? So this is when we're at our shortest, you'll notice. And then um, back to 3 o'clock to 12 o'clock, so forward again, and then once more round to three, checking the kind of disparity, one shoulder is higher than the other, and then see if you can travel around to six o'clock, and then from six o'clock, can you begin to move round to nine o'clock? So weight is on the um, left-hand side, again, just check Check that the um, now the left shoulder is higher than the right. And then can you continue forward to 12 o'clock? 12 o'clock, so we're back into that arched position. And then can you just continue around the clock? Okay. Just take your time. So I'm, I'm, I'm not spending a lot of time on this clock. We've had a whole lessons devoted devoted to this, so hopefully it's quite familiar to you in the in the class. Just exploring your ability to travel around the clock. So by keeping the shoulder over the hip, it really means that we're bringing quite a lot of movement into the, into the spine. Just again, just looking for easy movement, transference of weight around the clock. And once you've done a, um, a few clocks in a clockwise direction, then could you just reverse the direction of the clock? Okay. Just checking breath is nice and easy. You're more or less keeping the head and eyes in the centre, um, looking forward, checking the jaw is nice and relaxed. Good. And then pause and come back to centre. So really um, just a few clocks. I just wanted to use that to prepare the spine and then could you please um, turn your chair around um, so that you're straddling straddling your chair now if that's not so possible for you you can always um, uh, have a desk or table in front of you um, uh, to or even another chair in front of you with where you can rest the hands on the back and then once you've um, um, changed the position of the chair, so um, it causes the knees to be a bit wider, the feet to be a bit wider, of course. Just rest the hands on the on the knees, knees, and then allow, lower your head, lower your head, and then come back to you sitting upright. So just have a look at me on the on the screen. So um, often what you'll f you'll find is that if you ask them to lower their head, they'll quite literally confine the movement to the upper part of the of the neck. But um, th think of our six o'clock position helping you to lower lower the head and then come back up to sitting, to sitting more upright. So once more, you're just trying to lower your head so that the, the, crack, the top of the head comes to its lowest point, wherever, wherever that may be, and then come back up to sitting. Okay. And then the next time, lower the head, lower the head, and stay there, stay there with the head, head lowered. Good. And then um, uh, 
just lift the head to look forward, look forward, and then lower it again. So if you just have a game, have a quick look at the screen. So now, and this time, lifting it to look forward, I'm allowing my shoulders to come forward or of the of the hip to look forward and then lower, lowering it back down. So just lifting, lifting and lowering the head. And just notice which parts of your spine do you feel are easily participating in this movement and, and maybe which parts aren't joining in the, the party. So again, you're just looking for easy movement and, and notice whether your tendency, if you just want to pause a moment to look at the screen, is your tendency to try and initiate this from kind of just below the base of the skull or because you're all experienced students I'm, I'm kind of expecting more the and hoping more the initiation of lifting the head starts starts with the the pelvis to encourage more of the head to um, the spine to be involved and then um, lower the head and then lift it good pause just rest for a moment and then once more lower the head lower the head so you're allowing the back to round back round and think of the top of your head the top of your head the crown of the head as though it's got a piece of chalk attached to it. And could you begin to move the top of your head rather like a pendulum over towards the right shoulder and then come back to that lowest position. So if you just if you're unsure, have a look at the screen. So I'm keeping my head as low as possible thinking of the top of the head and I'm thinking from there can I allow the top of the head to travel in an arc towards the right shoulder and then come back. So just a few, few movements trying to bring the top of the head towards the right shoulder and then you come back to its lowest position. So just the top of the head over towards the right shoulder and then come back to its lowest position and then come to sit, sit upright. So just pause for a moment so again, I can't this lesson because it involves the neck. It's important to be very kind to yourself. Um, when you're moving the the, if I just show you the top of their head over to the to the right and back to its lowest position. One way of trying to do that, of course, is again just from the neck. But if you are doing it just from the neck, this lesson is not going to be so, so comfortable for you. I'll, I'll just show you from, from behind, from behind, the, what another possibility is as the top of the head moves over to the right, my um, sit bone, my right sit bone lifts. And as the head is going over to the right, there's a shift of weight through the spine over to the other to the other side. And then you come back. So um, it's really this lesson um, in a nutshell is although we're being asked to move the head, 
it's really can we organise a counterbalance, a counter movement through the spine and the pelvis so that the weight of the head is travelled in a very easy, easy way, so it's not a strain. So just once more, lower the, lower the head, so remember to lower it, the spine rounds, and then can you take the top of the head in a little arc towards the right shoulder, and then come back to its lowest position. So top of the head over to the right, and you'll notice how the right shoulder is lower than the left when you're over there, and then come back, and then once more over to the right, and then come back. And then come to sit upright again, come to sit upright, and then just test what's it like to lower the head and to lift it a few times and just, just to see whether that movement of the head over towards the right shoulder has just allowed us to bring a little bit more of the spine into that movement. Maybe it has, maybe it hasn't, it would be very much um, individual. Now, pause, and then bring the top of the head down to the, its lowest comfortable position again. Lowest comfortable position. And then from the lowest comfortable position, could you begin to take it in an arc towards your left shoulder, and then you come back to its lowest position. So just in an arc, over towards the left shoulder, and then back to its lowest position. And see if you can notice how the left sit bone can lift to facilitate the movement of the spine over to the right, and come back, and how one shoulder come, becomes lower, if you're allowing it to, than, than the other. Good. Just a few times, nice easy breathing, top of the head from its lowest position over towards the left shoulder and then come back to centre. And then come to sit up upright, upright, and then again just do a few little tests for yourself of what's it like to lower the head and lift it a few times. Again, just to see whether perhaps more of the spine has become involved in that movement. And then stay with the top of the head at its lowest comfortable position. And then can you take the top of the head from that lowest position over towards the right shoulder, bring it back down, and over towards the left shoulder. So just exploring a little arc with the top of the head towards one shoulder and then towards the other. And if you are kind of feeling a bit creaky, creaky in the neck, the, the kind of the way to unlock the movement, um, for me anyway and hopefully for you, is to begin to think of initiating this movement of the head from the pelvis. Pelvis, good. And then once you've done a few, come back to the sitting upright. And then just think of lowering and lifting the head a few times. Again, just to kind of 
answer the question of how much or is a little bit more of the spine participating participating in the in this movement okay. now um, pause just take a take a rest okay. and then um, please bring your um, left hand behind the back of the head Be, uh, behind the back of the head not on the head but behind the back of the head and think of tilting the head back slightly and then look forward so I'll just show you that from the side if you just want to have a look so I'm kind of creating a little bit of support for the back of the head and just tilting the head back slightly and then coming back so <clears throat> to tilt the head back can you see I'm allowing my pelvis to roll forward forward so as the head is tilting back the spine is actually curving forward into that 12 o'clock position the pelvis is going into that 12 o'clock position so you're just thinking of tilting the head back Good. and then stay with the head tilted back see if you can move your elbow the left elbow over to the left stay there and then can you just move the elbow a little bit forward and back a little bit forward of course it's traveling a little arc a little bit over to the right a little bit back but you're staying in this arch position with the head tilted back slightly and then just moving the elbow a little bit um, kind of around an arc to the right and to the left but we're, we're keeping the weight on the left sit bone and then release and then um, please bring the right hand behind the back of the head Again, um, think of tilting the back of the head to rest into that hand so we're again in that 12 o'clock position think of the elbow moving out to the right first so you, and then stay there so that's brought our weight onto the right sit bone and then just move the elbow um, a little bit forward and around to the left and then back so um, I'm looking at the screen but um, hopefully you're looking a little bit up at the ceiling um, to do that good and then come back so just re we'll just repeat that each side now that you, because it's a new new movement for the class so bring the left hand behind the back of the head to support the head tilt the back of the head into the palm of the hand so again if you're if you do that just from the neck it won't, won't be comfortable so think of rolling the pelvis to 12 to the forward position 12 o'clock now try to look up at the ceiling look up at the ceiling move the elbow first of all out to the left and then stay there out with the elbow out to the left and then just move the elbow a little bit forward and a little bit back a little bit forward and a little bit back good leave that alone come back to center bring the right hand behind the back of the head Again, to tilt the head back into the hand can you allow the pelvis to roll forward the spine to arch take the elbow out 
to the right, so out and up to the right, and then stay there, try to look up at the ceiling, if you can comfortably, and then move the elbow a little bit forward and back, just a little bit forward and back, good, and then come back to centre. You can probably guess what's coming. <laughs> so please bring your hands onto the back of the back of the chair. Back of the chair. And could you tilt your head backwards? Just to where you can comfortably get it and then look forward. So just have a look at the screen again, because this scheme is fairly, fairly new. So hands are on the back of the chair. One way of tilting my head would be to keep the back rounded, and then it's very uncomfortable in the neck. So to tilt my head back, I think of my chest, tummy, tummy, coming forward, coming forward to support the tilting of the head back. And then come forward again. And then tilt your head back again. So your face is kind of looking up. Your eyes are looking up towards the ceiling. And think again of the top of your head. And can you move it in an arc from this position over to the right shoulder and then come back. So just moving it over to the right shoulder and come back. Pause, come back to looking forward again. So just say, just want to show you that on the, on the screen. <clears throat> so the head is tilted back. I'm in that 12 o'clock position. And my thinking of the top of the head going towards the right shoulder and then come back. There's a big shift of weight. The spine is curving over to the other side as the head is going towards the right shoulder and then come back. <clears throat> okay. So once more. Tilt the head back, just to where it's comfortable for you, can't stress that enough. And then from there, can you bring it over towards the right shoulder and then back. Just a few times, can you notice, can you give permission for that shift of weight to happen over to the left? as the head goes to the right and then just pause and rest. So you can perhaps understand why we did the pelvic clocks to reactivate that, that movement of the spine at the beginning of, of the lesson. Now pause, take the head back, the tummy is forward, chest is forward, head is top of the head is back. And from there, can you take it over towards the left shoulder and back? To the left shoulder and back. And notice how the weight to facilitate this shifts over to the right, how the spine moves over to the right, even though the top of the head is going to the left and then come back. pause and rest. If you need bigger rests, longer rests, then of course feel free to, to take them. And then could you once again tilt the top of the head back, hopefully that's coming a little bit easier, and then could you go to the right and then back and round to the left shoulder, to the right and to the left. 
just a few times. Just again noticing that this that the more you can allow the shift of weight, the counter movement through the spine and the pelvis, the easier this this will be. Pause and take a rest. And now just return to the kind of test movement. Can you lower and lift the head a few times? Just noticing perhaps skin um, has more of the spine. Um, I'm involved, involved in this movement. And now I'm going to um, uh, just swap my, oh no actually I'll stay, stay in this position. Bring the hands back onto the, onto the thighs or just above the knees. And then could you lower the head again? And from this lowest position, could you begin to take your head, the top of the head, towards the right shoulder, bring it forward again to the lowest position, and over to the left shoulder, back to the lowest position, over to the right shoulder, back to the lowest position, over to the left shoulder. And then the next time you go to the right shoulder, could you continue to take the back of the head back, and then you come back down and to the left shoulder. And then see, can you again begin to go over towards the right shoulder and begin to explore taking the back of the head back and then coming back. So you're just looking effectively to develop a circle with the top of the head. So don't hurry this. Just kind of exploring where you can <clears throat> uh, as easy a circle as possible possible and then you keep you keep coming back so you're not trying to force the whole circle straight away but you're beginning to see can you eventually continue a full circle round with the top of the head, top of the head round. They, it's um, a really a question of how much you can allow your middle to move to facilitate this circle. Pause and come back to center. Hopefully next are okay, not too much <laughs> creaking go going on. I remember doing a similar, just whilst resting, a similar lesson uh, um, over a period of time in my training um, down on the, on the floor. And uh, um, uh, I did not like it <laughs> when I first started it. But I have to say, um, I was amazed at the difference it, it made uh, towards the, at the end of the s series. So, pause. Please lower the top of your head to its lowest point in front. And then could you begin to make, begin to develop a circle towards the left shoulder going back towards the right shoulder. So just to kind of develop that forward part of the pendulum movement from left to right. And then the next time you come towards the left, the left shoulder, 
could you begin to take the top of their head back and behind you. So you're just looking to develop the circle in the other direction. So nice, easy movement. So if you can't do the full circle, it's absolutely fine. The important thing is just to go to where it is easy for you. And as soon as it becomes difficult, you come away from that point and, and, and then you kind of return to it. So you're just sort of exploring where the difficulty might be that you're not shifting the weight to the other side, you're not allowing the shoulders to participate you've perhaps tensed in the jaw, jaw. So just looking for a circle, full a circle as possible, but it doesn't matter if you don't get a full circle. Good. Pause, come to centre. And then um, please turn the chairs the other way, turn the chair the other way. Now bring your hands onto your hips again. Bring your hands onto your hips. And see, can you lower the head to its lowest point again? And then from this lowest point, begin to explore a circle over to the right shoulder, forward and down towards the left shoulder. So again, just going from side to side from this lowest point. And when you feel the moment is right, can you begin to develop the circle with the top of the head, so it becomes, you begin, beginning to explore a fuller circle with the top of the head. So you're just doing what's easy for you. So you notice, so if you just want to pause for a moment to look at the screen, I'll just, just to um, show you. So if you pay attention to not so much to what's happening to my head, but to what's happening from the neck down, see it's a, a big shift of weight going around that pelvic clock again effectively with it to help, help move the head. Pause. Bring the, keep the hands on their hips and then um, see if you can lower the top of the head and then begin with the top of the head to go round towards the left shoulder, coming back down and towards the right shoulder and back down. So, okay. And then when you feel that the moment is appropriate, can you begin to take the top of the head back and round? So you don't have to go for the full circle immediately, certainly not, but then just see where is it easy for you to explore this circle? Where are you allowing the spine to adjust just to counterbalance the movement of the head. Pause and take a rest. Circles everywhere, aren't they? <laughs> circles and clocks ev everywhere. Good. Now, could you cross your right leg 
over the left, over the left. And you can either have the hands on the on the on the hips or wherever's comfortable for you. So we of course what we've done, we've created an asymmetry. Um, the idea of crossing the right leg over the left is to bring the weight essentially down into the left sit bone. So just check that that is true because it, um, it is possible to cross the leg and keep the weight over onto the, onto the right by tilting the spine. So you've allowed the weight to come onto the left sit bone. Bring the hands onto the hips or wherever is comfortable and then could you lower the head to it top of the head to its lowest point and from there begin to develop a circle with the top of the head again just beginning small to begin with can you begin to explore a circle with the top of the top of the head. Good. Just a few in one direction and then begin to explore the other direction. And don't be surprised if it's anything like me, <laughs> um, the, the circle's not such a perfect circle. And then come to centre. Just uncross the legs. Take a take a rest. And then could you cross the left leg over the the right? Have the hands on the hips. Again, can't stress enough. If your circle needs to be much smaller. If you only do a quarter of the circle, it's absolutely fine. You're just looking for which parts of the circle are easy for you. Could you lower the crown of the head, top of the head, and then begin to explore, moving the top of the head in an arc towards one shoulder and then towards the other. And when you begin to feel that the possibility opens, could you begin to take the top of the head back and round? Good. And then reverse, reverse a few times the circle. Pause, leave it alone, undo the, the legs. Good. Just separate the feet and knees uh, for a moment, for, for a bit. And then just see what's it like to bring your weight over onto the left side through our side bending and then over to the right. Over to the left and over to the right. And then bring the hands more to the, towards the knees and then uh, lower the head and lift the head. So again, not trying to see anything, but you're just thinking can you, can, how, much, how much of your spine is involved in the movement, movement now. Just lifting and lowering. Good. Are you perhaps able to more initiate that lifting of the head from the pelvis rather than from the, the neck? Good. And then come back to centre. 
So I'll probably I'll end the lesson there because it is a um, quite a tough tough lesson. I'd be interested to hear how you got on it onto it, whether you loved it or loathed it. Either is <laughs> either is a, a possibility and everything in in between. Um, what I would maybe ask you to kind of the takeaway from this lesson. So if you're at a kitchen table kitchen table turning to look or at your desk turning to look around are you just doing it from the upper part of the neck keeping the back immobilized or is your head movement coming from from the pelvis if you can begin to get it from the pelvis then um, I think you'll find, hopefully, find things a lot easier. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye. Thank you.